Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast NFL Edition. Yes, you heard it right. NFL Podcast on the L7C are back. And with that, we get the one-on-one time with our producer and our NFL expert, Mr. Justin Ackendale. How are you doing today, sir? I'm back. <laughs> oh, my God. After last night, I am fucking fired up for Sunday. Let's go. Let's do it. And before we get into it, uh, Justin, got to give you your flowers once again. Last year, when we started the NFL ones, we talked. people were talking about the league wouldn't finish because of COVID. And you and I both were the first ones out there. Look at the tapes. Look at the YouTube anchor, everything. We were the first ones out there saying the NFL is going to finish the season no matter what. And the NFL played all of their games no matter what. So got to start off with you were right on that, sir, before anyone else. Oh, yeah. Like, I've been watching this league for too long. I know how they think. I know how they act. They were getting that season done by any means necessary. Games on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, fucking Thursday, Friday. It didn't matter. They were playing those games. They were making sure they were getting all 256 games in. Amen. You called it right. And then everyone's like, damn, don't know how they did it. But our NFL experts, like I tried to tell you. But, man, we're back. NFL's back. And, shoot, we had a game yesterday. And that game came down to the wire. I watched the whole thing. I was fully amped during it. Like, man, tell us about that freaking Tampa Bay Buccaneers showing their banner against your Dallas Cowboys with the returning deck. That game was wild. Yes, we had a great game for opening night of the NFL season. Dallas, my team, the Cowboys, we were a nine-point underdog. The Lions ended up being, and I was like, hmm, okay. But I honestly thought we were going to get our asses beat. I did not expect Dak to go off the way he did. I mean, the guy literally came in and looked like he hasn't missed a beat. The man hasn't played since last October, and he was just he was just slinging it. Mari Cooper looked good. CeeDee Lamb looked good. But Tampa Bay is Tampa Bay. They're defending, they're defending Super Bowl champions for a reason, and they look just as good. I mean, they had some mistakes. They had some turnovers, but. We leave Tom Brady a minute 40 left in the fourth quarter down by two points or I forgot how much he was down by, but he only needs a field goal to win. You know the outcome of that game. We've been watching this shit since 01. He was only down by one. When Dallas kicked that field goal, it put him up 29-28. So Tampa Bay only needed that field goal to win. I did want to ask you on that. Justin, do you think Dallas should have potentially won for it on that fourth down? And got the first to try and get a touchdown to seal it. I know some talking heads were talking about that potentially. Uh, I think it was like a deep down in distance. I think it was it was like fourth and like over like eight or something. So mm-hmm. in that situation, yeah, you kick that field goal. It's week one. You just you just leave it in Tom Brady's hands at that point. But if it was like if the first time was within like five yards or something, yeah, I would definitely be saying going for it, go for it. Because Tampa Bay went eleven plays. 62 yards in a minute, 22 seconds to get the field goal. I mean, if you've been, if you were watching the game <laughs> up until the whole time, you knew, the, you knew the dude defense couldn't stop shit, but to their defense, I mean, it, it looked a lot better than it did last year. We got, we got the time break a couple times. We didn't get any sacks, but we cost, we cost a couple turnovers. So four, four turnovers that game. I, I mean, one was, one was the Hail Mary pick. One well, was the Hail Mary at the end of the um, first half. The um, the strip, the strip by Tank Lawrence in the first quarter. That was a great that was play. Like, that was a great play by Tank. Um, Tom Brady, and then Tom Brady threw a pick to Leonard Fournette, just bounced yep. off him. Leonard Fournette, you gotta catch that stone ass hands. And then, um, oh yeah, and then the last one, the fourth quarter, when God went fumbled at like the um, two bad. yard line that trying to bad. score. That was I was like, whoa, like. We got a chance to win this game now, but once we didn't get the touchdown, I was like, damn. But for week one, I mean, the schedule really leans out after after this game. I mean, we got the Chargers next week, which should be a tough We got to go to L.A. for that. And then I think the next couple. I also wanted to ask, too, like, if everything hold true and you guys would have made the two field goals, you guys win the game. Yeah, we um make the extra point and and um, Greg's airline doesn't miss that field goal. We do win. Yeah. But like, back to the schedule, Cowboys got the Chargers next week, then at the, then Eagles at home, Panthers at home, then Giants at home. So after the Chargers, we got the next three games at home. So 
really leans out. Yeah, I think the Chargers is the tough. Just off what I know now, the Chargers are the toughest one now because there's a lot of people on the uh, Herbert MVP train right now. I mean, shit, you might get if Dak keeps playing the way he does, and the Cowboys no. are in the mix in the NFC. I think he's going to put on the. Um, Me too. He's going to be definitely in the contention for MVP. I I could see you guys beating the Eagles. Who was the fourth? Um, the Panthers and then the Giants. So that's good. The next- Four Could, weeks coming up. I got to see how Carolina plays because I mean, this is Sam Darnold getting a reset, and now he actually he has one of the ultimate weapons in McCaffrey. So I do want to see how he plays, but I feel like you guys should. All those games are winnable for the Cowboys. Absolutely, and then after the Giants game, we got the Patri- We got at the Patriots and at Minnesota. So it really does lean. Out. I mean, the broadcast said yesterday that we don't play a team that made the playoffs again until we play the Chiefs in like November or something. So. If the Cowboys can get a little better on defense, clean up the red zone. We only went like one for three in the red zone. Got to clean that up. Got to score touchdowns on field goals. Can't be missing field goals. But if we clean some of the stuff up, I'm very optimistic. So is Zach Martin the second most important player on the Cowboys outside of Dak? Because everyone was saying that since he wasn't there, Zeke wasn't able to get loose at all, especially when you talked about the red zone. That's where Zeke's supposed to make his bread and butter and get those touchdowns. Yeah, I think... Zach Martin's very important. He's our best lineman, without mm-hmm. a doubt. But that was just Tampa game script. Like, you, you just can't run on them. You couldn't run on them last year. You had Vita Bay in there, and Sue, like, Levante David, David White. Like, that deep, that front seven especially is is stacked. And that's why I kind of like what Dallas was doing. Like, the sh- in the short passing game, they were attacking the edges, like, mm-hmm. away from away from the front seven of the defense. And then um, Tampa had a couple um, injuries in the secondary. so. Real, real good exploiting that matchup out there, going away from the strength of the defense. Yeah, because you brought up Dak, too, and people, that's his first game since that injury, and yeah, I, I was October. not expecting him to play the way he did. He was phenomenal. Nah, like, yeah, I was a little worried there in camp when they, when they held him out all of camp because of his shoulder. Like, I knew the ankle was going to be fine, but the shoulder was what was giving me trouble, and he looked good. He looked Damn good last night. And then just to on the defending champs before we move on from this, I mean, what what can, what can you do against this offense? Like Mike Evans was barely even involved, and you had A B have a touchdown, 100 some yards. Gronk had some touchdowns, like God went, even though he had that fumble. He had a touchdown. Like, what do you do against this offense? And I, the running game wasn't even potent. Yeah, I'm I don't know why Tampa didn't run the ball more because the on their first drive, they were getting us for like five yard gains. They like they definitely could have ran the ball more. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I really don't know what you do against um what you do against Tampa's offense. I mean, when A B is your third receiver, yeah, it is it's He's- gonna be a bad time. You got slot corners and backup corners guarding A B all game. Like <sighs> it's just tough and like if you look at it from a Tampa perspective, like they won that game and they turned it over four times mm-hmm. and yeah, the kind, the kind came out flat. I mean, they had hella penalties. They had a mm-hmm. bunch of pass interferences on defense. Like they had all those penalty yards and all those turnovers and still won the game. Like that's, a, that's a pretty good sign if you're a Tampa Bay Bucks fan and shitty for the rest of the NFL because we're going to have to probably watch Tom Brady go in their Super Bowl. Oof. I, I'm not going that far yet. I'm not. I, I got to see how these games go, but I, I really do think there's some teams in the NFC, I mean, who can do it, but we'll see. But that's the end of that one. Tampa Bay won 31-29, came down to the final, the final play of the game in a great opening night game. One of the best opening night games I've seen in a while because sometimes the, it's a blowout. Yeah, some open night games you get, I mean, great performances. Like when um, Peyton Manning was like first game with the Broncos, he had like seven touchdowns mm-hmm. or something like that. You get a lot of blowouts, but that one, that one was good. You typically don't get a game as good as that on open night. But from opening night, we have Sunday night, and our expert picked three big games that we're going to be previewing a little bit, talking about. Uh, the three games were Cleveland versus Kansas City, Green Bay versus the Saints, and Pittsburgh versus the Bills. Justin, which one do you want to talk about first, man? 
Let's talk about Buffalo and um, Pittsburgh. That's hey, the one. That's, your that's man, the one Josh the Allen. My guy. Now that man, he got paid over the summer. Mm-hmm. I expect I expect a big season out of him. I mean, they made it to the playoffs. They made it to the playoffs last year, made it to the AFC Championship game, came up short against Patrick Mahomes. I hobbled Patrick Mahomes at that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I really like the Bills. Their division the is very so so. The only true contender, the only team that can really give them trouble is probably the Patriots. I feel like the Dolphins gonna fall back a little bit. The Jets are the Jets. And then on the from the Steelers side, they got they gotta prove it. I mean, they went was it eleven or twelve and no, I can't it remember. It was eleven and zero to start the yeah, season. They went eleven and zero, and then in the season, only winning twelve game, only winning twelve games. So. Big Ben's back. They retooled the offensive line, drafted Najee Harris, paid T.J. Watt. I know the defense is going to be good. I just don't know how Big Ben's going to hold up all year. And also, with just last night, T.J. got paid as well. Their star defensive player, T.J. Watt. Yep. So, man, Justin, with this, with this game, looking at it, with Buffalo, I honestly, they went 13-3 and three last year. I feel like they have to think that they at least have to get to the AFC championship game this year, at least from what the team, with the team they have. They were there. Um, they're there last year. I don't see a reason why they shouldn't make it back there. I mean, they still have all their receivers. They didn't really lose anybody. Josh Allen has another year on his belt. I don't see why they can't go back to the um, AFC championship game. Yeah. I mean, last year we talked about it. That Stefan Diggs trade was one of the best trades I've ever seen for a young quarterback and with Pittsburgh I mean the last time we saw them play they got utterly embarrassed by the Browns in that playoff game and I'm honestly not expecting much from them this year like at most a wild card team I don't think they're going to win the AFC North. I really don't oh, I no. think it's, it's going to come between uh, Cleveland and Baltimore who Baltimore is going to rue it right now but I, I'm really and this is at home if the Steelers come out and win this game I might be all right they might be doing things, but I expect Buffalo. I don't know what the spread is, but I expect them to win by at least eight. Let me see if I can figure out what the spread is. Oh, actually, I know what the spread is. The um, the Bills are a six and a half point favorite. Oh, they're yeah. a six and a half point favorite. I think they would cover. I think they would cover that. And Ben, I mean, if Ben plays like he did the tail end of last year, this this would have to be his last year. If he plays that bad. Yeah, if he start if he starts the season the way he ended last year, we're mm-hmm. going to see Dwayne Haskins playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, like, Lord. that will be that will be their best. <laughs> that will be their best chance to win. And what about? I feel like another person who has pressure on him is Juju, because I mean Juju, he's the number one receiver there now. He was number two when AB was there. He he exploded because AB was on the other side, so he was. But now he's the number one. I haven't seen the same stuff. And I know he has Claypool in now, but are you expecting a big year out of Juju this year? Or I'm not really expecting a big year out of Juju. I mean, they got Deontay Johnson there, mm-hmm. who does have a little issue with dropping passes. But, I mean, he Big Ben loves throwing to him. You have Claypool on the outside. I honestly think in the pecking order of receivers, I think Juju's third, honestly. Okay. Like, okay. I, I wouldn't even consider Juju a number one receiver. He was a free, he was a free agent this year. And um, no, he tested the market and he didn't really get what he was out there looking for and ended up going back to the Steelers. So he's going to he's going to go back there and fall in line. And and as a third option, like I like Juju as a as a third option. Absolutely. Yeah, I think sometimes he's I need to know who his management team is, because as a Pittsburgh Steeler wide receiver, you shouldn't be doing the crate challenge right before the season's about to start. Just saying you shouldn't be, <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that. Just if you want, if you want to climb, climb up on a crate and not fall, I think an NFL receiver could do it. I saw, I true. saw some videos of girls in high heels walking up like fucking stilettos and shit. So that's true. I think Juju's fine on the crates. <laughs> Let's stay on um, in the AFC with the other big game you want to talk about the Cleveland Browns. This is actually a rematch from the playoffs the Cleveland Browns versus the Kansas City Chiefs 425 game CBS. This is probably going to get the Romo and Nance, don't you think? Romo and Nance on this one? 100%. Justin, man, I mean, we live in Ohio, but now it's national. People are high on these Browns teams. People are saying not only could they make noise in the playoffs, but 
potentially make the Super Bowl this year and legit. What are you thinking about this Browns team? And what are you thinking about this game? I mean, from the Cleveland Browns, if you forget all the history from when they came back to the league in 99 and just look at the roster and based off how they did last year, they're absolutely in the Super Bowl bubble without a doubt. I mean, in the playoff game, Patrick Mahomes did get hurt, but you know, if um, uh, it was oh, Rashard Higgins and like right before halftime in that game, he um, fumbled the ball out of bounds and um, it was a touchback. Mm-hmm. If he scores that touchdown, the Browns are in the AFC championship game against Oof. the Bills. Oof. So they were, they were literally like plays away from the AFC championship game. Mm-hmm. So, and they, br- they bring back their, they bring out their same line. They have a healthy old old Beckham. Still got Kareem Hump, still got Dick Chubb, Miles um, Garrett. Miles Garrett on the defense, Denzel Ward. I mean, the team is stacked with talent. They signed Jadavion Clowney, yep. so you have Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney coming off the edge. I mean, talent-wise, you know, Browns are probably top three in the NFL. That's if what you're I was talking hearing. pure talent. And they got Kevin Safansky as the coach. and He's a great coach. He's a great coach. And, I mean, for Baker, too, I mean, this is the year where if he proves it, he's going to get paid. Yeah, he will get paid. I'm yeah, he's probably looking at, you know, 33, 35 million. I wouldn't pay Baker Mayfield 40 million. I think Baker Mayfield might know that he's not a 40 million dollar quarterback, but we'll see about that. You know, in the NFL, these quarterbacks get paid by who's next in line, not yep. by actual performance yep. or wins or anything. So mm-hmm. hey, if you if you got the stats and you're next in line, you get the you're the next um highest paid um quarterback in the league. But their opponent, though, is the Kansas City Chiefs, who's been to two straight Super Bowls. Three straight AFC title games. You already talked about that dude, Patrick Mahomes. They're bringing back all these weapons. Last time we saw them, their offensive line could not do anything against Tampa's defensive line, and they got shellacked in the Super Bowl. What are you expecting out of the Chiefs in this game and in the season? I expect the Chiefs to get back to what they've been doing before the Super Bowl. They um, signed some new guys for the offensive line. They got um, Orlando Brown. He was the right tackle in um, Baltimore. And um, they let him go because Orlando Brown wanted to be um, the left tackle. And they already have Brown Stanley, who's coming off injury. So they get him. I can't remember the other guy who they're signed, but they, they, fix, they fix the offensive line. Mm-hmm. They still have Tyreek Hill. They still have Kelsey. They still have Mahomes. So I, I think they're going to lie it up. I, I think the Chiefs win it in this game. And then they probably they probably go on and just do what they've been doing. I'm, I expect them probably back in the AFC Championship game as well. All right. You heard it here. You think this game is going to be close, or you really think the Chiefs are just going to come out to send a statement? I think the game's going to be close. Okay. Now, Andy Reid does not lose in week one in September. So <laughs> you got to be weary about that. But, yeah, I, I don't think the Browns are winning this game. But after this game, the Browns, their schedule gets really light too after after this game. I mean, they got Browns got Houston after in week two, mm-hmm. the Bears after that, then at the Vikings and at the Chargers, and then Cardinals, Broncos, and Steelers. Okay. So okay. let's shift it to the NFC. Uh, since the Cowboys have already played, the 425 Fox slot is open. And now it is the Green Bay Packers versus the New Orleans Saints. That bad man, as Stephen A would say, Aaron Rodgers coming back. Uh, Devontae Adams, they're quote unquote having their last dance as Packers. Or, oh, God. <laughs> and they're going against the Saints. And uh, Drew Brees, we saw him. Yesterday, as of recording, he was there on the NBC crew. So they got a new quarterback in New Orleans. His name is famous Jameis, Jameis Winston. Justin, man, first, what did you think about all that Aaron drama? What are you expecting out of the Packers? And what are you expecting out of our guy, Byron Mitchell, the captain's New Orleans Saints in this game? Well, yeah, about all the Aaron Rodgers drama. I mean, the man basically threatened retirement. Mm-hmm. Say he wasn't going to play for the team, mm-hmm. requested a trade, and ended up coming back for Randall Cobb. <laughs> Turned down being the highest paid um, quarterback in the league. Mm-hmm. And, he, and, you know, he's been saying that this is, his, is essentially his last hurrah in Green Bay. I'm still on the fence about that. I don't know. If they make it to the Super Bowl, I don't think 
he's going anywhere. I mean, you gotta remember, it's not like it's not like this is a Sean Watson situation before his legal troubles, which we the L Seven C haven't even covered yet because we don't know if he's going to be ever playing or in jail. <laughs> yeah. he's still on the roster. He's still on the he's roster. Still on the <laughs> roster. Not suiting up. But before he became a creepy man, um, he was just requesting a trade to get rid of from a shitty team. Mm-hmm. We understood that. But the um, what you call it? The Houston t- Texans sucked and weren't doing anything. Now Green Bay is different. Green Bay is consistently always in the mix. I mean, yeah, they drafted Jordan Love last year with their first round pick, and like I said before in other podcasts, I thought that was a bad move. I thought they should have got a receiver or someone who could contribute to winning now. But it's whatever, and I guess it sent Aaron Rodgers over the edge. But, you know, I expect a lot of last year from the Green Bay Packers. He's not going to throw for, like, 47 touchdowns or whatever he did last year. It's going to be a little regression there. But, yeah, I still expect Green Bay to be towards the top of the NFC. The Saints, on the other hand, they're replacing their Hall of Fame quarterback, Drew Brees, with Jameis Winston. And shout-out to Sean Payton for – Putting for making Jamie Woodson the star. I swear to God, if I had to watch Taysom Hill be the starring quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, I was gonna blow a fucking gasket because that man is not good. No, he's not. <laughs> he is not a good quarterback. Titan, yes. H back, sure. Not a quarterback. Mm-hmm. But the, the Saints, yeah, they still Michael Thomas is hurt. Michael Thomas is hurt. They still have Alvin Kamara and you just got to put your faith in um, Sean Payton that he will have the offense now and the defense is still pretty good. Yes. I think, I think the game's going to be close. The game's being played in Jacksonville because um c- because of Hurricane I I guess the um, Superdome has some damage. So I don't see New Orleans winning, but they're definitely going to fall back a little bit. I, they're probably going to be around 8-9, 9-8 type of team. So I remember correctly, Green Bay was 13-3 and three and they were the number one seed <laughs> And the NFC last year, because they hosted the NFC Championship game, Aaron Rodgers won his MVP. Uh, I know some people are trying to say that he's going to try and repeat. I don't see him repeating as MVP just of week one, but oh man, I'm excited. I'm going to see Jameis. I'm more excited for Jameis. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh my God. That preseason, that Monday night mm-hmm. preseason game, he was letting that bitch rip. <laughs> I know it was the Jaguars and there's probably nine stars in the game, but yeah, I can't wait to watch James Wilson play. I mean, that man is must see TV. He, I'm about to say, you, you, you remember the NCAA football games, to, mm-hmm. um, the road to glory. That man is the personification of Jay Player. That man <laughs> w- w- wins or loses you the game. I mean, he might throw for five touchdowns, he might throw for six interceptions. You don't know what you're going to get. He's wildly inconsistent, but he is wildly fun. And I cannot wait. To watch. He had, and he had that lace of guy surgery. I mean, last time in Tampa Bay. He was 30 for 30, but he had like 5,000 plus yards and they were seven to nine. Like you take away like six of those picks there in the playoffs. Like the man was just letting, <laughs> but yeah, but you got, you got wet. I mean, you got Alvin. So Alvin's going to get pretty heavy on that, but those are the big games that our producer expert wanted to talk about, but I know why you guys are here. You're here for Aki's bets. You're all here for the bets. Justin, what, what are some good bets for the weekend? I took a teaser this week. I took a teaser. Okay. We have our we have the Browns and the um the Browns and the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. I think that line that line was like six. The line was six. It was a really big line. Everyone knows that Andy Reid doesn't win. That doesn't doesn't lose in September. He's mm-hmm. a very good first quarter of the season coach. I teased that down to a, a pick 'em. So Kansas City just has to win the game straight up. And then I also put into that teaser the 49ers against the Detroit Lions. Hmm, the 49ers. Okay. I, ex- I expect big things from the 49ers this year. Mm-hmm. They're going to Detroit. They were a nine and a half point favorite. So I teased that down by six to two and the two and a half. So. I'm looking for that game. We all know the lines are going to suck. And then a couple sides that I picked. I took the Washington football team mm-hmm. my, um, plus one. They were a home point underdog. And typically week one, week two, early in the season, you look for um, um, home underdogs. Home underdogs do really good. So I took them plus one. The line actually, sw- actually swung in my favor 
because the Chargers are now a one point favorite now. So I put that bet in on like Monday. And then the last bet that I put in, I'm taking my hometown. Well, not my hometown, but to see them in. I took the Bengals plus three against the Minnesota Vikings. Really? Another home dog. After watching Dak on Thursday, I mean, I put the bet in on Monday. So I'm expecting Joe Burrow to um, pick up where he left off last year, too. And the Bengals could easily cover that game. So, yeah, I got the Bengals. I will say, though, uh, Dallas has a better offensive line than Cincinnati's, though. I mean, a little nervous. They do, but their weapons are they, they got some good they weapons, got weapons too. They do. They got they got T. Higgins, they got Tyler Boyd, they got Mixon, like they they can they can throw the ball too. Hey, they do got weapons. I mean, I those are the Aki bets for the week, but man, we finally have our first full week one where you literally line it up 1 p.m. 425. 820 and then on Monday you have Monday night football. We are really back in it, man. It feels like it was it didn't felt like it's been a while, but I'm excited for that first full Sunday of NFL football. The last time we were on was a draft, and that was that was May. Yeah, that was May. So yeah, I guess it's been a while. And I mean that Sunday night game, Bears versus the Rams. That's a team that people are getting a little hot for the Super Bowl pick. The Rams is a Matt Stafford. Uh, I mean, yeah, I definitely like. I think I definitely think Matt Stafford's a better option at quarterback than Jared Goff. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm absolutely done with that dude. After he lost me that bet against them in the Jets last year, I'm absolutely <laughs> done with them. He was a guy. Hey, I don't know what the Rams were doing business. Paid them both, Goff and Gurley, and both are gone. Hey. <laughs> they they playing with a different set of cash than the rest of the league, right? So, Justin, man, before we sign off, this last year we talked about COVID. This year, obviously, there's still COVID going on. There's a Delta variant, but stands are going to have full fans and all that. But the NFL, they're not playing around. They have all these violations and stuff in place that you need to get vaccinated, Mm -hmm. stuff like that, and potential fines of $14,650 if you violate COVID protocols. I'm not seeing any league take it this serious. But the NFL said, we're not rescheduling this year. If you don't have enough players, it's a forfeit, which I think that's a lot worse than rescheduling. Like, what do you think about the NFL's COVID like rules and how strict they're, they're being? They're not joking around, man. I mean, like we said at the beginning of the podcast, they're getting the season done by any means necessary. And I guess they didn't, I guess they didn't really fool with that um, playing games on Tuesday and Wednesday. Mm-hmm. But I mean, at this point, like, you know, if you're not vaccinated, I mean, you know, companies are doing it all the time. They're mandating this shit in schools. They're mandating it for like government positions. So like the NFL has their right to make sure their players are vaccinated and not screwing up their season. So, hey, I'm, I'm here for it as long as the Cowboys can get in line and not <laughs> have too many niggas out from COVID. Then I'm cool with it. I mean, get your shots. No, I'm, I'm yeah, I think there's like you said, by any means necessary, they will have which this NFL season is going to be the longest one ever because we have the extra game. So by any, by any means, man, Justin, that was it for our NFL opening pod. Anything else you want to say before we sign off? Man, I'm, I'm just so ready for Sunday. I cannot wait. A lot of game, a lot of games on, a lot of bets being, are going to be placed this year. I'm pumped. I just can't wait for Sunday. The only thing I got left to say, obviously, thank you, Justin, for being our NFL expert and being on. And in terms of contenders and the AFC with the Chiefs and the Bills, I mean, watch out for them Tennessee Titans, King Henry, Julio Julio Jones. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Here's my take on Derrick Henry. That man, they're running him into the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dude has over like 400 carries last year. I mean, I th- I definitely think Derrick Henry's going to take a step back. I don't know. I don't know about the offense. I don't know about Tannehill since they added Julio. So they have AJ Brown and Julio. They also lost to tight end John New Smith. He's a, he's up in New England now, and he is a he caught a lot of touchdowns for them last year. So I, I don't know if Derrick Henry can sustain. It. I mean, there's only been like very few running backs who have sustained this type of workload for a four year stretch that he's approaching. So we'll see with him, but he 
He's been proving it. I'm just saying, man, if with AJ, if AJ and you, you can't double team him, you got Julio on the other side. And if Julio's any form of Julio, I, uh, well, let's just hope Julio can stay healthy. I, the whole oh, I, I know. Just, and then like, not not just stay healthy, not get hurt at all. Because that man, even if he's hurt, he's still going to play. And that just, it just takes down his effective level, his effectiveness greatly when he's not 100%. Mm-hmm. So if he can stay healthy the full season, I'm totally with you. Watch out. But right now, I'm probably going to be fading the Titans a lot. We'll see what they, we'll see what they do this year. Who they play, who they got week one. Cardinals. Uh, Card- Ooh. At Tennessee. That's going to be a good game. I know last year they could not get pressure on the quarterback to save their life. (laughs) So we'll see what Kyler Murray does to him. And with that being said, thank you all for listening to the L7C podcast. Make sure you take Justin's advice on the Aki bets. Get that money. We'll be back in a couple weeks to go over some of these games, new bets. By then, we're going to have more storylines. Someone's going to explode onto the scene in these next couple of weeks, and we're all oh, here for it. I got one more bet that oh, I did not say. Oh, an extra bonus bet, y'all. I don't know what it is now, but I did. There is a team I'm very high on that I think is going to make the playoffs after, you know, being a little so-so last year. I took the New England Patriots to be a wild card team this year. Uh, you're, like, you're on the Patriots trade? It was like plus 300 or something for them to be a wild card team. And yes, I did buy it. I think that Mac Jones. Mac Jones. They're calling him Mac and Cheese. I don't like that nickname. Mac and fucking Cheese. <laughs> he's, he's going to be a playoff starting quarterback by the end of the season. You heard it here from the L7C and Justin Ackett, though. You heard it here. I'll be back and oh, we'll see in a couple of weeks where they're at. They got a tough game. They got Miami first game, man. I'm telling you, Bill Bell. I, there's one man to bet on. It is Bill Belichick. That man is not. That man is not going to go two years in a row without making the playoffs. He's just not. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Patriots, okay. okay. And with that being said, y'all, again, thank y'all for listening to the L7C podcast. You guys take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.